Hello, my name is Björn and I'm a technical product manager at FTrack. Today I will talk about the FTrack API and the core concepts around it. We will cover basic API usage, including installation and how to get started, more advanced queries and filtering, the event system, and finally, some basics around actions and widgets. Actions and widgets are not technically part of the API, but I want to explain what they are because they heavily rely on the API. But first, let's talk about the FTrack API. The API allows developers to write code that talk directly with an FTrack workspace. The scripts can perform operations against that workspace. The FTrack API is built around a concept of schemas. The schemas define the entities available in the API together with their attributes. Here we see two examples, the schema for a status and the schema for a time log. Let's look at how to find the entity schemas that are available in the API and what those attributes are. Now, let's open FTrack in a web browser and navigate to the user menu up here to help and then to API reference. In the API reference, we can look at all the entities available in the API schema. Let's look at asset version. The asset version entity have a lot of different attributes, such as ID, date, and status. We can see that the ID is the primary key. It means that it's a unique identifier for a specific asset version. The ID is very useful when using the API because it can be used to find a very specific entity. From the FTRAC web UI, you can easily find the ID of an entity by opening the sidebar for that entity and then find the ID at the bottom of the info tab. Different attributes are of different types. Some of the attributes are scalars and some are relations that define a relationship to other entities. Asset version can look a bit overwhelming because it has a lot of properties, but most of them are actually relations to other entities. Relations are very useful as they allow us to do the following, to get more information when fetching data using the API, or to filter the data based on its relations. On asset version, the status is a relation to a status entity. If we click on the status, we can now see all the attributes available on the status entity. The FTrack API is available in your workspace as the slash API endpoint. The API endpoint can be used directly using a curl command like this, but it is more convenient to use one of the API client libraries provided by FTrack. FTrack maintains libraries for Python and for JavaScript. If you want to use the FTrack API, for another programming language or application that does not support Python or JavaScript, you can use the slash API endpoint directly or build a simple API client yourself using our libraries as reference. They are available as open source. In this video, we will use FTrack Python API client. Now, let's get up and running with the Python API client. First, you need a computer with Python 3 installed. We recommend using Python 3 since Python 2 is no longer maintained and our API client will eventually drop support for it. When testing with Python, it's best to create a virtual environment where you can install new libraries without messing up anything else for anyone else on the same computer. Once we have created a virtual environment, we activate it and now we have our own isolated Python environment where we can install the FTrack Python API client module using the pip install command. The client will be installed together with 
any required dependencies, and we are now ready to start using it. To start using it, we run Python and then import the Aftrack API module. To actually use the Aftrack API, we also need to have credentials that the API client can use to authenticate with your Aftrack workspace. The credentials we need are in your account page where you can find your username and generate an API key. Keep this API key safe and to yourself. You will not be able to retrieve it again, but you can reset it if you lose it. Once we have the credentials, we are ready to start. To use the API client, we need to create a session object using our workspace URL and the credentials. The session object will then be used for reading or writing data from your FTrack workspace. All communication with an FTrack workspace takes place through a session. This allows more opportunity for configuring the session, plugins, and so on. And it also makes it possible to connect to multiple FTrack workspaces from the same Python process. To read data from FTrack, we make a query. A query is an expression that defines entities we would like and their attributes. The query syntax in FTrack is similar to SQL, but with the ability to use relations more easily. Here are a few examples of queries. And remember that we can use the API reference page to find what entities and attributes are available. The first query, we just select name from tasks. In the second query, we select ID, name, and the status name from a task. And in the final example, we, we select the same attributes, but we also apply a filter to only get certain tasks. The attributes we specify and say that we want is called a projection. The projection is useful because we can define exactly what we want in the response so that we don't have to make multiple queries. The response from a query is a Python object that can be used like a dictionary to read the attributes. Relations are represented in the same way, but as their own objects instead of scalars. One thing to be aware of when using the API and querying data is that the API can also be used to traverse relations manually without making any queries. This is simple to use, but comes with a cost. Every time an attribute is accessed, it will be fetched from the server if it's not already loaded. And this is fine for a simple situation, but could become a performance bottleneck when reading lots of data. This behavior can, however, be disabled by using the autopopulate argument when creating the session or by setting it manually. That way, you can be sure no additional calls to the server are made and your projections must include everything you need. Another aspect to consider when thinking about performance is how much data to include in the projection. Sometimes it's tempting to get everything at the same time from all the relations, but from a performance pers perspective, it can sometimes be better to just load the basic information and then do another query to get additional data because those two queries could be faster than one big query. One of the important things to know about is that the session object will not persist changes to the server automatically. Once you have created, updated, or deleted entities, you need to commit any changes to the session. This allows for doing multiple operations in the same transaction. To create new entities, we use the session.create method and pass two arguments to it, the entity type and a dictionary with the attributes we want to set as the second argument. Updating an entity is as simple as modifying a dictionary and then calling session commit. Entities can be deleted using the session delete method and then calling session.commit. Be careful when deleting using the API you will not get a confirmation like in the Aftrack web UI. Those were the basics on how to use the Aftrack Python API client. 
More information and examples can be found in the documentation. Before we move on to the next topic, I would like to show a few more advanced query examples and how to use query filtering in the FTRAC web UI. The first one is an example of filtering on a relation that have multiple entities in it using the any operator. The second one is also an example using the any operator, but with a filter that uses relations. And finally, an example finding things where the relation is empty. A nice feature in FTRAC related to API queries is the ability to write custom query filters and use them in the FTRAC web interface when working with list views for tasks and versions. Remember that you can use the API reference when building these queries to find the available relations and attributes. Building query filtering into dashboards and views is probably not something everyone would do on a daily basis, but a technical user can configure those views and dashboards to include those filters and then share them with everyone else. You can also use variables in those filters on a relative date or to get the current user. One of the core features in FTRAC is the event system. When something happens in FTRAC, either using the API or in the web interface, events are generated. Most of these events can be used to build functionality around FTRAC using the API clients. In the Python library, the event system is called the event hub. The event hub can be used to listen to events or emit events. Many parts of the FTRAC uh, interface rely on the same events to communicate and act on changes. One of the most common use cases for events is to listen to update and react on those changes, either by making another change or to gauge with the user using something we call actions. It's easy to use our API clients to subscri subscribe to events. When you subscribe to an event, you pass in a function that will run when an event is received. In that function, you can react to the event using our API. You can also publish events using the API. This is useful if you want to communicate with other API users or when building actions. We will talk about actions next. One of the main concepts in FTRAC is actions. Actions is a way to build additional and custom functionality into FTRAC. Actions appear in the web interface and are context aware, which means that different actions can appear depending on what you're looking at. Let's look at actions in the FTRAC web interface. If I open the sidebar like this, I can run actions from here. And here is my example action that I can run to see a simple form interface. I can also run actions by multi-selecting here in the list view and then select actions. I can also go into the overview section of FTRAC and here I can select items from multiple projects at the same time and run actions. If you want to know more about actions in FTRAC and how to create your own actions, have a look at our actions webinar. Actions are conceptually quite simple and are built using events. I will try to explain how they work under the hood. In the client, in our case, the FTRAC web interface, we will emit a discovery event when you open the actions window. An action running somewhere will respond to that event. All actions that responded are shown in the web interface. The user will click on an action in the web interface, which then emits a new event. An action will then run and respond 
either with a message or an interface. A user interface can be a simple form or a custom widget. Let's talk about widgets and how you can build widgets using the f API. Widgets can be used to build your own custom interfaces that can be shown in the f web interface on dashboards. Building widgets is useful if you need a very specific view or aggregation of data you track in f or if you have a custom workflow that require an interface. To summarize, widgets can be used in two key areas in f either on dashboards as widgets or when using actions. So when I run an action, a widget can be displayed. Simplified, a widget is just a regular HTML web page that uses the f API to present information from f -Trek. This page can be very simple or very advanced depending on what it will be used for. I will not go into details on how to build widgets in this video, but there are plenty of examples online on how to get started. That's all for today. I hope this has been a good introduction to using the f API. And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to our support channels. Thank you.